Now, the first 1,024 ports are what we call well-known ports. These are established to work with particular, uh, uh, who's got camera one? I am a computer, and I just received this piece of data from some computer way out there on the internet. The problem is, is I don't know what this data is for. See, if you looked at my monitor right now, I'd have three or four web pages open, I'm checking my email, I'm playing World of Tanks, and somebody's trying to call me on Skype all at the same time. So I've got a bunch of conversations going on with a bunch of different computers all over the internet. So what is this piece of data for? And more importantly, like I said, it's a piece of data. It's not a complete data. It's not a full Word document. It's not all of my email. It's just a little bit of a piece of it. So I've got two big issues I've got to deal with. First of all, how do I get this to the right application? And secondly, how do I ensure that the data that I'm trying to get gets to my computer complete, full, working, guaranteed? So to deal with the first one, what we're going to do, I want you to take a look at my IP packet here and we're going to add a little bit more to the packet. What we're going to do is we're going to add two more pieces of information called port numbers. Port numbers are unique to individual applications that are used all over the internet. For example, port 80 is used to define a web page. So anytime you see port 80, that means this piece of conversation has something to do with the World Wide Web. Now, keep in mind that this is a packet that's going out to a web server. When this packet comes in to the web server, he's going to look at that 80 and he's going to go, oh, this needs to go to the web server and it'll start dealing with this data. The second number is how the data gets back to my computer after the web server starts responding. So what will take place is when this data comes back, the IP addresses will change and then this will switch over also. So if I've got three different web pages open, I'm going to have three different numbers here. And then that way, when this packet comes into my computer, depending on what this number is, it will know which web page to send it to. So I can have three or four or five or a hundred web pages open and it will get to the right place. Now, the port number that when we send it is kind of important because the first 1,024 port numbers are what are known as well-known ports. You can have port numbers up to about 65,536, but the first 1,024 are reserved. I can never use that as a return port number. So these are all kind of famous, and on the Network Plus, you're gonna to need to know them. Port 80 is for HTTP, port 20 and 21 are for FTP, uh, all kinds of different port numbers that you're gonna to have to have memorized for the Network Plus, and we'll take care of that in other episodes. But for right now, appreciate that we have port numbers. Ports are the tool that we use that once the data gets into the computer, that it makes sure that it gets to the right application. However, ports are only part of the equation. The other problem is right here. This is a piece of data. It's not a whole data, it's a piece of data. This could be a piece of a Microsoft Word document, or it might be part of my email, or one twenty-five thousandths of a web page. And the problem is, is that I want my whole web page. I want my entire Microsoft Word document. And that's where TCP comes into play. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. And Transmission Control Protocol is a connection-oriented conversation between two computers to make sure that the data gets to you whole, complete, and in order. Two big pieces of TCP are what we call a sequencing number, which if you break this up into 25,000 pieces, the sequence number allows you to reassemble everything properly, as well as the acknowledgement that when a data set comes in, the acknowledgement is when I talk to the other computer and say, got it, everything's good. The beautiful part about TCP is that it's the overwhelming protocol that we use on the internet. And that's why we call it TCP IP and not something else. Speaking of something else, there is one other protocol that we use to move data between one computer to another called UDP. UDP is similar to TCP with one big glaring difference. It is not connection oriented. In a UDP environment, one computer just sends the data and hopes that you're ready for it. If the data doesn't come to you in good order, it's up to the application itself to verify the data and then try again. So keep in mind that we have two protocols, TCP and UDP. TCP is connection oriented and UDP is connectionless.